What is up, folks? Oh, boy, a tough night for the tank, man. The Flames. What a- it was a barn burner. The tank bowl was a freaking barn burner. It was the toilet bowl barn burner. Boy, was that a good game. It's a good game. Maybe, Kadri, Kadri, could you, like, not play like it's the Stanley Cup final? Maybe just for, like, no. five minutes, dude? No. Like, five Crank minutes? Crank it up. Crank it up. We'll get the pick we deserve. Fuck this. Yeah, that's lose true. On purpose. Yeah. Well, you don't want to lose on purpose, but, I mean, like, it doesn't hurt. Like, I mean, don't you know. let up. No letting up. You know that it creates bad habits for next season. Yeah, I guess. Your it's mic's the, it's the same fuzzy. thing from game to game or, or season to season. Is it bad? Your mic's fuzzy, so maybe just switch to the other mic. So we're going to break down the, the tank bowl that we just saw here. Oh, man. That was a really good game, dude. That was a great game. If, if, if you're not worried about the draft position and you are of the belief that, hey, let the chips fall where they may, that's a really enjoyable game. thought Coronado was really good. thought Connor Zeri looked really good. Igor becomes the highest single season scoring Belarusian player. Um, Nazem Kadri was fucking awesome. Dustin Wolf had some shaky moments, but he gets the win. So there's a lot to like about that. But that's kind of a tough one for Team Tank. How's the mic now? Yeah, it's pretty echoey, but it'll do. I'm freezing. My mic blows. You might have to do this on your own, bro. Got a, I'll, I'll take it on my own. I I gotta have to, I'm going to have to go to, it's not Future Shop anymore, is it? I think that's yeah, you, my problem. You got to take it. You got to take Probably it to the store, man. Probably the last time I went shopping for gear was when was Future Stop was still around. Anyways, you're a you're a big proponent of this of this anti tank thing a little bit. So, what do you think of the game tonight? Oh, I can't do it. It's not my nature. I don't think it should be in these guys' nature either. I mean, you see it when you're getting clocked from a team. It's a blowout. All you're looking if you're a team is to get a little momentum at the end of the game to take you into the next game. You see it time and time again. So, I think it's the same thing. You know, you're going from season to season. You're going to want to go into the off season with something substantial, you know, as a team, as a player, as an individual, you want it some, some, something meaty to be able to, you know, prepare yourself for next season. Like we've never covered a, a rebuild before on this podcast. This is going to be new territory for it's us. Not a rebuild. God damn it. It's a retool. And have, when was the last time they legit went through a rebuild? I, I don't think it feels like they've been trying this retool thing out for ages. Yeah. You were sold. You sold this bill of goods when Jay Feaster took over with his chubby little fingers. He was all about the retool. I mean, it, he was it, all about the refill, the big gulp. Yeah, he fill me up. Give me a freaking size sixty-four ounce seven up, please. Um, free, free hot dog, I'll take two. <laughs> that was definitely part of Jay Feaster's contract for sure. But you kind of saw this with with Tree Living too. I like the rebuilding years under like, with the Gaudreau and, and Monahan and Kachuk. You pick twice in the top. You pick. Kachuk six overall, Monahan six overall, Bennett four overall. That's functionally a rebuild. But the way they kind of handled it was still in the name of a retool. It was their trading first round picks, like smack dab right in the middle of prime rebuilding years. I don't know if you'd call the Young Guns era that everybody hates a rebuild. That was just kind of like the economic reality of the team being terrible and unable to pay anybody. So I don't think they've ever really been through a rebuild in the modern sense. Uh, we recorded an episode earlier today. This was probably the main topping point, talking point. Hey, since you asked me the question, let's throw this Uyghur, Uyghur uh, uh, quote up here. I think this is a great talking point. Yeah. Um, when you're when you're talking about, do you want to cheer for losing or winning? Yes. Yeah, secretly, when they lose, you're like, well, that's okay. Um, so Uyghur had this to say, I don't know, a couple of days ago. I think it was Francis reporting on this. It's easy to ask for a trade. I grew up not to be a quitter. I want to stay here. I want to win a cup here. I love this city. I believe in Connie and Husk, Backland, Nas, and everybody. I don't think we're far. I want to turn it around. Starts with yourself. A, fuck yes. This is like immaculate leadership, is it not? Super immaculate leadership. This is slap, like, slap the captaincy on this guy in a couple of years, man. This is captaincy vibes. But, you know, you and I are talking about this all the time, which is, if you're a guy like Kadri, you're a guy like Uyghur, you know, you just sign these massively long contracts to stay here in Calgary thinking the team was going to be relevant. Remember, Kadri was like, yeah, I'm, we got the best, you know, center depth in the league now. Take on anybody in the league with me and Lindholm and Backlund down the middle. So these guys really, you know, thought Calgary was going to be competitive. Turns out, no, we're not going to be. We're going through rebuild. So if you're these, these guys and you're here for the long haul, yeah, you can pout like it looks like Huberto does, has been since he's still not over 
He's still not over Florida dumping him. Hey, he's like the guy that started a new relationship, still still going on about his ex with his new girlfriend. Dude, you know his, you know he's got his flight booked uh, Fort Lauderdale after the game against San Jose, the last game of the year. So, I mean, you're you're in professional sports, and you know a guy like this, Uyghur, his mindset. Wow, to be in in this type of a season where your team is literally in the tank bowl, you know, the final two months of the season. Guys like him, Caudry, Coleman, they've been coming up with quotes all year long. They have to figure out something that's going to motivate them as individuals and as a as a group. Um, and that, I don't know, what's the goal for next season for these guys? I just think that you never want to try to suck and lose on purpose because it just – that type of mentality, you, know, you don't want that to, to carry on to game over game, season over season. I like I like that these guys are digging in almost harder than we've seen all season long to round out the season. This is great. Yeah, it's great. At the same time, I'm kind of like, yeah, they, where were they? Why weren't they doing this? Why weren't they digging in last year? Like, where was this? Where was this performance from a lot of these guys last year when they are in a playoff? Oh, because there was a dark, it is right there. There was a dark cloud ruling over Hubert, oh man. So at one at in in one sense, yeah, I see that stuff from Uyghur. I'm like, fuck yeah, man. As a fan, as a as a fan, you you want things to hold on to. You have to see that. So as a fan, you like that. But then, you know, the other part of me is like, yeah, but you like totally. I mean, Uyghur was good last hey. year. So I should, I, I'm not picking on him specifically. I'm just saying a lot of these guys who this year as the Flames sit in what? What are they? 24th, 25th in the league? All of a sudden, we're like praising their leadership. And, be, oh, these guys are such great. You're in the fucking tank, Bull. And you <laughs> absolutely sucked to end last season. So. I like it, but at the same time, I do have a bit of a cynical attitude towards some of the some of the leadership yeah. stuff. So. No, that's a great point. And I mean, hey, it seems like in Calgary the bar is pretty low in terms of you know having having a lot of support even when you even when you suck, right? Yeah. But anyways, it was a, hey, it was a great game tonight. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna Kuzmenko was awesome. We didn't even mention him. Um, I thought Matthew Coronado had he's had a string of. Two or three really good games, which, I mean, that's what we're really looking for at this time. We're in small victories season here to round out the year. Con thought Connor Zary was very good. Zary had an dude, unreal game. Play, dude, he's looking dude. good at center. That's Kuzmenko, though. Drawing penalties. Kuzmenko, <laughs> though. What the dude. fuck? What is with dude. this guy? It's very um, interesting. He had a very, very interesting game today. It's a very, very, very interesting for me. Very, uh, very let's throw this uh, Sportsnet through Kuzmeko stat up here. Most points among players under 15 minutes of ice time per game this season. He's right up there tied for second, second in the league. I mean, Dude, he, you saw he came over from Vancouver. You know there's a transition period. Everybody always talks about that. He battled through some illness. He battled through a bit of an injury. So this is this is what we're seeing. This is the player he is. The guy's on a fucking heater to round well, up the season. He's on a heater too. And you know what? Like we criticize guys for maybe getting hot at garbage time, but I think no, what you have do. you seen? I do for sure. Yeah, I'm just like, oh, Huberto's putting up his points in meaningless games. Oh, great. Um, oh, well, if we're talking about Huberto, yeah, I'll jump on board with you. Okay, <laughs> so it's just just Huberto. Um, just Huberto. But I mean, if you look at because I the conversation around Kuzmenko right now is like, oh, do we trade him? Do we keep him? What do we do with him? And it's kind of interesting to see like how long has he been considered like like we we everyone's like, oh, Vancouver didn't want him for the playoff run. He they are doing better without him. Stuff stuff like this. Like he's not a playoff guy. Like you've probably seen what's what percentage of his NHL career in two years now has been subpar. It's a very short amount. He was well, awesome. Is... He was awesome last year. And he's been absolutely lights out, and I think probably better than people give him credit for since he got here. Like you said, he was sick. He had the injury. So it's just been like a, just a brief chunk of time where like he and Talkett didn't see eye to eye, and he hasn't been on top of his game. But, dude, the guy's been – he's like you look at this guy, and it's like, holy shit, he's probably one of the most elite like Russians in the game right now. And his ineffective hockey, the sample of that, has been extremely short in the NHL. Dude, I was thinking about this this morning before the game started. It was just like, how did Vancouver 
fuck this one up. I get like I don't know the discourse. I didn't follow. I don't follow much outside of the Flames. Like I'm very dialed into you know the Flames world of sports. Uh, Pacific Division, I'll follow, but I don't. I don't know what were what were Vancouver fans saying. What was the problem with Kuzmenko? He didn't get along with Taco, obviously. Well, I mean, kind of, yeah, kind of the the stuff you hear. Oh, his defensive game. He wasn't really like committed to to playing hard the way Taco wanted him to. I mean, if you look at his, defensive but like you're game, saying, like it's your second season. This guy scored 39 goals as yeah. a rookie. Was his rookie year? I mean, he's a rookie, player, yeah, older player. But still, you would think you'd give a guy a bit more of a leash. I guess they just. They just thought the value was Eric Lindholm that was a good little swap, but they gave out a sh- they gave up a shitload at the same time. I'm sitting here like, dude, we got we got rid of our mo- least most ineffective player in Lindholm at the time. The guy had mailed it in since the start of the season. You get Kuzmenko back, plus you get a huge haul. Like, how the fuck did Connie pull that off? Dude, that was this is gonna like, did he put the wool over freaking Alvin's eyes and Jim Rutherford and just like do it? Oh, Lindholm, Selkie Canada is gonna take everything from you. What a great trade. He's been he's been so good. And, you know, I, I know a lot of the talk is like, hey, are we going to pump and dump him? What are we going to do with him? And I think that's valid. I think there's nobody on this team you shouldn't consider moving if it's the right move. But I don't know. He's just such, he's such a great player. And he is such a good – dude, the, the vibes. You want to talk about immaculate vibes. This yeah. motherfucker has some immaculate vibes going on. And he brings a lot of energy to the entire team. And he's been absolutely – he's been clicking with Nas. That's been just a delight to watch. So I don't know. I'm curious. I, I'm very, I'm open-minded as I can be right now in terms of keeping Kuzmenko for the future. We'll see. Yes, yes. It's very interesting for me. Mm, very interesting. Very interesting for Andre Kuzmenko. He has another, dude, three points tonight, six points in his last two games. Absolutely has revitalized the power play. Oh. We've gone. We've gone from having probably the most unwatchable power play. Jack, you have those power play stats real quick. What is it like? It's been first in the league since like late March. It's been top eleven since early March, and I mean it's not it's not all been his doing. I think it was kind of starting to come together before he got here. But dude, he has been yeah, dude, he has been the catalyst for a, a Flames power play that is suddenly not only fucking not terrible but dangerous. Dude, forty two point nine percent. I think they said in the last little stretcher it has had the best. Best numbers in the league. Better at Edmonton, folks. Yeah, since the end of March, I think they've had the best power play in terms of percentage in the entire league. And that's crazy it's, considering it's, considering I think it's still like overall like 25th or 26th. That just shows you how bad it was previously. And and you can, you know, the timeline coincides with one Uyghur. Yeah. On the blue line. That's that's the main thing. Oh, also. what a what a great idea, eh? Oh yeah, the, the guy that's the top three in defensive scoring. Yeah, let's let's wait seventy four games to put him on the PP. Let's try Rasmus Anderson. Let's try Mir Manov. Rasmus Anderson on PP two tonight. It's, it's like, oh my god, I'm so glad we're not watching this on PP one anymore. No <laughs> shit. Anyways, power play has been on fire. So I don't know. I'm open minded with Kuzmenko, and it'll every situ every like I said, there's no player on this team given where they're at in the cycle of their their rebuild or retool or whatever you want to call it. Everybody's on the table, but you just look at how good this guy is. We bitch and moan about how we don't have any skill on this team anymore. This guy has tons of skill. He's scoring goals, and these plays, these like goal line plays and these plays he's setting up and these goals he's scoring are pretty much what you've really been missing since Matthew Kachuk left. Like a lot of these goals, that goal he scored in Anaheim the other night, that's a Chucky goal. Yeah, these plays, these, break, how about game breaking yeah, goals? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Big goals. And again, it's garbage time, but still. Um, so. I got a I got a massive open mind. I got such an open mind about Kuzmenko re-signing. My brain might fall out. Well, we had a discussion on the podcast earlier today about this because, you know, I'm throwing this at you. This scenario: if you do, if you can, get, if you can extend him, then regardless, you, he's still always a good trade chip if you have him at a pretty decent deal. I mean, if you're gonna actually keep him around after his contract expires next year, you know, you're. If he goes off next season, which all signs point to, he's probably going to, offensively speaking, then you might be able to get him at a better better deal if you do an extension in the off season. I get, and that, you know, your concern with that is how long is the term going to be? But man, if yeah, if you can, you know, you know, the only kind of clarity right now Connie has in terms of the vision for this team is to be competitive by the time the new rink is built. I think anything from now until then. It's just, can we keep an entertaining product on the ice? 
well, we keep making solid management decisions, manage our assets, yeah. keep focusing on the draft and bringing up and recruiting. So, yeah, like, I don't know. I, I would, I'm down for extending this guy in the off season. Yeah. If the term and dollar are, are uh, feasible and reasonable, then I think absolutely the flames would be. And I would be too. Um, you just don't want to be doing anything that and it's not even that it doesn't fit your window. It's just, <laughs> you're probably not in a position to be handing out contracts to anybody. I think the other thing to consider is I think this maybe applies more to a possible Sharon Govich extension than a Kuzmenko is, extension is, is he more valuable on your team than what you could get for him in the open market? Cause you've kind of seen this, this with wingers, especially it's like, right. you can't get jack shit for wingers right now. Apparently it's like, you even look at what to who is having another great season this year. And even though the Sharon Govich trade has worked out great for the flames, initially that return looked really light. Wingers are hard to trade. Toffoli uh, has scored back-to-back 30-goal -back seasons, and he's, like, not getting traded for much. So, I don't know. It's We'll see what Craig has up his sleeve. I trust him to handle it similarly to how he did the Toffoli one, how he did the Dzorov, Lindholm. If the price is right and it makes sense for the team, he's, Craig's going to probably do what's best for the team. And I think we can I think we can trust in that at this juncture, can't we? I think we have enough faith in Connie to do that, don't uh, we? Well, Maybe with with what he's done yet this far, for sure he's getting the benefit of my doubt. Yeah, dude. Has Kuzmenko? He's like what? He's got 19 points in how many of his games? He's doubled Lindholm's production. He's got more goals than Manja Bonnie. Dude, just keep the, keep him around for the vibes. We can, here's what we do: you keep Igor Sharangovich, you sign him for the Lego memes, just for the memes, and you keep you keep uh, Kuzi around just just for the vibes. I'd sign them both. What about Manji Apani? He's kind of like the other. He's the. These are the three expiring deals after next season. Yeah. So next season, after the end of next season, you have kind of three main uh, unrestricted free agents: Kuzmenko, Manji Apani, and uh, Sharon Govich. Oh man. Manji It'll be Apani, interesting. I got, are we ready to move on Manji Apani? Is that where we're at? Probably. I don't know. I still really like him, but if he's going to be what? What is he turning 20, 28? 20, he'll be 29 when he needs when his new contract kicks in, I think. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if both team and player were open to something in, going in a new direction. I still think I'm still more of a Manjipani proponent than a lot of people. I know he's had a tough year goal scoring wise, but I still think he does a lot of the things that he's paid to do, which is drive play, be a good two way player. But yeah, we'll see. I think that one's more of a question mark than Sharon Govich for sure. Um, and then Kuzmenko's maybe a bit of a wild card. If you're Kony, how would you how would you handle the Manji Pony situation? Would you prefer that maybe he beefs up his trade value so you're looking to trade him at the deadline? Yeah, I mean, if he could get like, what does he have? He's gonna finish the year with like maybe 40 points. Yeah, that's a really off season for him, man. Um, I I think he, I, he's not getting to 20 goals, that's for sure. Um, so. He's probably not has a ton, doesn't have a ton of value. He's got 14 goals, 39 points. I still think his, his underlying numbers are still pretty solid this year. Maybe not so much defensively as they usually are, but you probably test the market in the summer. And if it's not what you like, you kind of start the season with him and, and see where it goes from there. All right. Well, let's get to some of the game here. If you got, uh, if you're in the comments in the chat, throw some questions up. We'll get to those after, uh, after the breaks. Sorry if my mic blows. I had a mic plugged in and it sounded like I was getting abducted by an alien or something. So. We'll get a fix for the next one. Uh, so Coyotes come in, obviously, lots of lots of news. The, the this Utah, team. the Utah Super Soakers, the, Super the Soakers. Salt Lake City Storm and Mormons. What's our name? Storm and like Mormons. Okay, because I'm seeing all these names out here. I'm like, I've known. You know, oh yeah, the Tabernacles. I saw that. Yeah, Tabernacles. That's a good one. But um, um, just call them the Latter Day Saints. There you go. Ooh, that's actually really good. Rings right off the tongue. Now these uh, this Yotes team has been actually cruising here in the last little bit, and they came up flying. Like they're looking a good they're little looking, team. They're looking like a good little team. They got a lot of skill. They got a lot of pop. Um, I'm not sure where they're out on the defensive side of things. I mean, it's a six it was six five final. Yeah. Well, six, Ingram Ingram kind of letting like he was doing his best tank job for them there. Six five final. I don't know. What were your thoughts on Wolf tonight? There was very little defense. A lot of. Yeah. I mean, that first one goes Dude. in, and you're like, oh, fuck, because we're here banging the bolt <laughs> drum 
all day long every day that one goes in you're like oh fuck yeah but uh you know the the broadcast did a good job i think it probably did go off shillington stick because shillington stick moved like a motherfucker when they show the replay like it was bending so I don't know. Maybe you just throw that one aside, but even still, yeah, you're he's gonna have cross gonna, ice one timers. Four on one, they had that change in the neutral zone. It's like a freaking four on one. And That's the cool. Yotes, like their guys are sniping top shelf, top cheese. And I mean, I think some of those goals, like he's just the fact of the matter is he's a smaller guy, and you're just gonna have to deal with the fact that sometimes he's gonna let in goals where he's just small, you know, like shoulders, yeah. shoulders kind of drop sometimes. You know, but we it's, also saw the patented quick cross yeah. ice. You know, toe saves and he made a couple of really good saves right in the slot. He had one, a glove save on Keller, good positioning. So it yeah. wasn't his best game, but he's gonna hit what his how many games has he played? He hasn't even played 20 NHL games, he's gonna have some rush, rough games. Yeah, and I mean, there's no defense, so yeah. I mean, this is the dude, same dude. You're taught your, your defense is like Mirmanov and Shillington and Pahal and Nahota. It's like this is a skeleton crew of defenders here. Yeah, I was having a chat with somebody on, on Twitter, I forget who what his name was, but. He's making a good point. Like, and you track any of these young goaltenders coming up. Remember, Wolf's like technically a call up still. Like, he's he's your third ringer guy. He's just there due to injuries, really, essentially. But um, if you track the progression of these goaltenders, you're not going to see killer stats in their first, you know, couple seasons. But it's nice to see his progression happening, taking place. Well, yeah, and it's not like the Flames, like you said, no defense. Flames have a, a leaky defensive team all year, and the Coyotes have some really skilled shooters over there, so. All right, so the Yotes go up 2 nothing early, and you're sitting here like, oh, fuck, it looks like we're going to get it. Like, looks like the tank is on. For the tank, baby. Cue up the Hubert driving the tank beams. Let's go. And then the Flames come back from two two-goal deficits. Um, that, <laughs> that first goal, man, Kuzmenko. Dude, well, should we get the That was pretty. You want to do highlight of the night? Let's do highlight of the night, and it's like a All two-tiered right. one here. It was two tiered. Uh, I pulled the fan base over 100 votes. Sharky gets the slight edge, but it's a bit of a tie. So we're gonna we'll do the Betway highlight of the night. A dude is like a calm. What is he like? A Michael Furlan, a new and improved kind of like Michael Furlan, eh? Yeah, you like that comparable. Yeah. But he's he's yeah, he's, he's so, the thing that's interesting with Bospisil is just his honest impact has been so good this year. Like it's just it's, it's surprising to me. So the Betway highlight of the night, we're going to get to the striking goal in a sec, but the highlight of the night is presented by Betway. Get the Betway app on your phone. Bet the responsibility with Betway. With Betway, you can get a free bet up to 200 bucks if your first bet loses. Create an account, scan the QR code on the screen, and redeem your bonus. Place a bet, no minimum amount required, and if the bet loses, you will get a refund up to 200 bucks. You can then use that money to bet on your favorite sports. This offer is available outside of Ontario. I did redeem this. I bet yeah. on the Coyotes to win tonight, so I'll get my twenty bucks back. You were you you like the tank? I know you like the tank. See, no, I like it. hedging my emotions. You love the tank. Yeah, it's true. I like you hedging win, my emotions. You win either way. If the Flames win, I'm happy. And if I, they lose, then I win some money. So, you know, bed your emotions. So let's uh, okay. Well, let's see the Sharky goal because this this took the cake for the actual highlight of the night. He already became the first Belarusian player to score 30 goals in a season. He now passes Mikhail Grabowski to be the highest score, single scoring season by a Belarusian player. Lovely. I mean, you call that a goal scorer's goal. The Kuzmenko goal is also a goal scorer's goal. You see him trailing the play. He finds that empty space all alone for the empty net or tap in. Just some beauties tonight. Shoot. Every goal was sick. Hey, the thing about Igor that's like, hey, I'm not I'm maybe a bit more critical of his overall game than most people, but does the dude score does the dude only score sick goals? Yep. It's either absolute lazy dude, like he only scores sick goals. I've never seen him score a garbage goal in my life. Dude, I if I'm calling him, I'm fine locking these guys up three, even four. Seasons like these guys watching Kuzi, watching Sharon Govich, they're going to make this rebuild, retool feel a lot quicker. And then having to fun watch, to watch eh? then having to watch, uh, what did they have to watch last time before Johnny showed up? It was like they traded a frick. I don't even, you don't even want to remember some of those names. Lee Stempniak, no offense. Ooh. I like Lee Stempniak, but some of those, some of those nights, I think. Everyone's freezing up a bit. You good? I think I'm okay. I, I might need to just, yeah, I got to go to Future Shop. Okay. New computer, new 
dude, you got it. You got to get a new laptop route. You got to get a new router. New, you got to get the whole shebang. I need to start a goal. I need to start a GoFundMe. I guess. Eh? Yeah. No so, kidding. No kidding. Let's get an ad break in here. When we come back, we'll we'll finish breaking down the game and then get your guys' questions. Greta, it's our home away from home for Afterburner. We'll be there for live watch parties throughout the season. Should be your spot regardless. Before, during, and after the game, grab a cocktail, something from the menu, let the games begin, or maybe you get into the game yourself. Over 50 arcade games from vintage to state of the art. Load up some credits on that Greta game card of yours and get at it. Greta Calgary, located at 213 10th Avenue Southwest. Check them out online, gretabar.com. It's nearly the best time of the year. Playoff hockey is around the corner. And I'll tell you what, the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino is the place to be. Cheer on your favorite teams with us at the Stage Bar. Enjoy the big game on one of those huge screens over the bar with friends, drinks, and delicious food. Let's go visit GreyEagleResortandCasino.ca for more information. Now, while I've got your attention, let me tell you about the happy hour at the Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. Let's make the most of the day and spend your afternoons with great drinks and food. Join us at the Stage Bar and Blaze Bar and Grill for our new happy hour every day, 2 till 5. Enjoy food, drinks, all starting at 5 bucks. Make the most of your days. Visit GreyGoResortandCasino.ca for more information. If you're thinking of buying or selling your home in the Calgary area, there's one guy you've got to talk to. That's Derek Newman of the Derek Newman Real Estate Group with CIR Realty. Buying or selling doesn't really matter. Derek does it all. He's a volunteer in the community, active in sports around the city, whether it's golf, curling, huge Flames fans. So talking sports or talking about the real estate market, definitely give him a shout. He's approachable, trustworthy, and hardworking. Also, Derek's got a pretty vast network. He's even got access to some homes often that aren't even on the market yet. And you can ask him about his complimentary home staging consultation as well. Buying or selling, call him or text him right now at 403-619-6661. Derek will make it easy for you. Get Derek and his network to work for you. That's Derek Newman. Email him at dnewman at cirrealty.ca. More post-game reaction right here. We're back on Afterburner. All right, man. We're going to get to DoorDash is hungry for more in a minute, but we got to talk some Matthew Coronado first. So Flames go down 2 nothing. They they tied up with, uh, I think, halfway through the first with uh, that goal we saw from Kuzmenko and then this Coronado snipe. Fuck. He's coming. Out. We've kind of known he has an NHL release. That's the one thing we, you know, you, remember the preseason? He was tearing it up in the preseason. We were all like, man tantalizing hasn't really translated much this year and it's been kind of disappointing the lack of production but i do think in you know i think at the beginning of the year he was generating some scoring chances until he was sent down he's got what 42 points in 40 games in the ahl pretty good 21 year old and you got to remember it's his first he played college last year it's his first year yeah. pro yeah first year pro game. like I that's mean, a huge adjustment man huge adjustment this uh the CHL is probably unmatched, you know, at, at preparing kids from junior to, to make it step into the show. So, but it's not easy to do. But you know, for college, you're right. I think that's maybe why the foot steep speed is, is taking a bit more to adjust. Um well, pace I, think, play, I, yeah, but, I think the pace, I think he's picked up his pace for sure. You've seen him motoring around on that play, right? He just gets on his horse and flies up the ice. He's had a couple really nice shifts. I think he, he didn't play very much in the San Jose game, but he had that one. He had a really nice primary assist on the Rastus Anderson goal. He sets that up. There was that shift against the Ducks the other night where he just freaking had the puck on a string for like 30, 40 seconds and just kind of missed, fl flubbed the shot, which was odd. But hey, he's been taking heat from some fans, but I've had zero problem with. Yeah. With his uh, development arc, that what I've seen from this season. And I mean, yeah, I mean, the other thing too is he, he's been playing all over the lineup, right? That's he's, tough, man. Play on the fourth so line. Hard. Plugs. Well, playing on the fourth line, but he's here, he's there, he's everywhere. He's in the minors. He's up for a game. He's playing with Rooney. Like there was a play the other night where he makes a really nice outlet pass. To Rooney joins the rush. No shade on Rooney. He's been good, but Rooney just like dumps it in and goes for a change. Like you're, yeah. you're having a hard time creating quality scoring chances playing those kind of minutes with those kind of guys. And I mean, if you look at his scoring, if you look at his rates, like per 60 minutes, he's actually producing a lot more scoring chances than you might think. So I've been pretty impressed with him recently. Obviously, you hope it starts to translate and you hope to see what you saw the last couple of games and especially tonight. 
Well, we did a good segment on him on today's on our, our own podcast earlier today, but basically, you know, the underlings are there to, to me. You can see he's, he's progressing into the game. I just think that once he starts put, put some goals away, then yeah. he's probably, he's going to start popping off here. So it's nice to see him to score tonight. Hopefully he can score one more goal uh, before the season ends, you know, come in with some confidence from the off season and get a good camp and then crack the lineup. And who knows, maybe, I don't know how many goals do you think he scores next year? I don't know. Like at the beginning of this year, we were all like, Hey, maybe he could have like a, a Monaghan type uh, rookie season where he does hit that 20 goal mark. I don't know. You should, You'd like to pencil him in for like 15, 20, you, you'd think. I think with that shot and what he can do offensively. And if he does get a bit more playing time. And again, if you look at his under, if you look at his scoring chances metrics, he's actually creating a lot. So like you said, once once that starts going in for him, you get him some power play time, which we saw early in the year and was promising before he was kind of taken off. Um, but yeah, you, you probably hope he can be a, you, what you're hoping for is you get a 20 goal score out of this guy. Absolutely. I think that once, when he does pop off, he's going to, he will score 20, 25. Yeah. He's got that. I I just, I just, he's got a motor. He competes hard. You know what? It's been an adjustment, but I like it. Anyways, let's get to, let's get to hungry for more presented by DoorDash. DoorDash has restaurants. They have groceries, pharmacies, bakeries, flower shops, and more. DoorDash has everything you need. Ordering is easy. You open the app, you choose what you want from where you want. You can use Double Dash, with, which means you can order from multiple restaurants or stores, get the same delivery without additional delivery fees. You can use the code NATION25 for 25% off and zero delivery fees on an order, your first order of $15 or more. That code is NATION25. So, you know, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for just more of what I saw from Matt Coronado the last couple of games, him specifically. He's had a few really nice games. You want to see him finish off the season strong, come to camp strong get ready to roll. I mean, he was great in camp this year. He had an awesome, he had a hat trick in, mm-hmm. in uh preseason, but the more confidence he has, the more minutes he plays, the better he's going to feel. I used this nation 25 discount last week, folks. Yeah. If, if you're, if you're ordering food online, don't forget to use it. Good little discount. I don't know, man. After seeing this Uyghur quote, I'm just, it amps me up to know that there's guys that are this bought into such a shitty, yeah, like his 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 uh, mental state frame of mind, you know, throughout this entire rebuild process. Like I'm I'm jacked up. I'm, well, yeah, I'm I'm just hungry for whatever you know, whatever this group is going to rally behind in the next two three seasons. All these vets that are stuck here, like it's going to be interesting. To, I, it's going to be really interesting and intriguing to to see how this little retool on the fly goes. Because, I mean, we talk about this. You have some really interesting pieces on this team. Kuzmenko has scored 40. He's playing like a 40-goal scorer. He's playing like an 80 Dude, he's eight, playing 80 like player. a fucking superstar. There's no reason why he can't hit 90 points playing like this next season. The power yeah, play is finally yeah. clicking. You got Uyghur. Is he going to build on this season? You got Kadri having a – is he having a career year? Dude, it's Kadri's having the second best uh, season he's had in his career. The other one was in Colorado when he had 87 points. You have he, these young guys so in, in, in Zari and Possible, so they're showing flashes. Coronado is starting to develop a bit. Like you have, you have these pieces, and you got the, you know, I don't know, I don't know about Backlund and, and Mangiapane. I'd like to see more from them next season. They, well, they, but I don't know. It's a, it's an interesting team. I mean, yes, we're eighth last place right now, so I don't know. Oh yeah, but, you, you, you. It's to me. It's just going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out. Yeah, you saw it from games. Anderson. Like a few. When was it? Anderson was Rasmus Anderson was doing his post game a couple weeks ago, and he just kind of like started like out of nowhere pontificating about like being a leader, being a leader, and being a role model for young players, and how he had such a great first year, but he struggled in his second year, and trying to be for players throughout their development. These guys are like calling out and trying to find their meaning for the next few years. And hey, you love to see it from guys like you love to see that shit. And it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to translate into a quick retool or whatever. But if you're a fan and you're and you're a fan of this team, that's exactly what you want to see and hear from your leaders. And yeah, maybe it's bullshit. What else is he going to say? But he could say nothing, and he didn't. So 
Zari ties yeah. up the game in the second period. Sweet little uh, setup from Hunt. That's Zari's 14th goal. He's been – okay, dude, we got to <laughs> – I took some heat for saying that Zari, I think, has been the Flames' best skater since since getting called up. Um, oh, by the way, make sure Nation25, use that DoorDash code, Nation25, uh, 25% off your first order of $15 or more. I took a little bit of heat for, well, a lot of heat for saying, for just mentioning that I think Connor Zari's been the Flames' best skater since he's been called up. I probably should have framed it more along the lines of he's been their most consistent and one of the most impactful skaters. Because obviously Kadri all season long or Uyghur have been better, but dude, this kid from the moment since he came up with his skill, yep. with his hard work, with his just defensive awareness, just with his overall attention to detail, he has been so solid. Another solid game tonight. Well, do you remember Kadri was doing fuck all until he started playing with uh, Pospisil and Zarya? Yeah, yeah. like, dude, then dude, Kadri, that's, when yeah. Kadri, that's when Kadri turned his season around, and he's been humming ever since. Yeah, but I think you got to give Zari especially credit, possible as well to help you know a resurgence of Kadri's season, his individual season this season. Well, and now he's taking Hugh. He's Zari got uh, Kadri on the right track. And Hugh be going Huey on the right track, man. Get him going. Huey they've got do. they've got some chemistry. You, dude, you'd never know that Connor Zari has played as he played four. Has he played five games at center? You'd never know he played five games at at the hardest dude. position to play in the NHL. in the NHL in the best league in the world. Like looking really good. This Those two, legit. yeah, he's legit. Those two guys looked really good against the Oilers. Um, they had a really nice connection on a goal against the Ducks and looked pretty good again tonight. Where did we draft him again? Sorry, he was, uh, I think he was in the 2020 draft. He was like 22nd or 24th. They've traded down a couple times to get him, I remember. So he went first round, yeah. He was in the Dawson Mercer draft, I remember, yeah, first round, but late, yeah, it was so later. Was some of these, you know, 20 plus picks, they don't usually pan out. And, you know, up until now, he's been potentially one of your better prospects. But man, has he really had an amazing season first year. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, a good, a good way to like, because he had a really tough first year pro injuries were part of that. But you look at like Coronado, it's like these guys take a little bit of time to kind of figure things out a little bit. Back to the second period, the uh, the Coyotes go back up five three, another two goal lead. Um, Shane or Shane Doan's kid, Josh Doan. This guy's been lighting it up. And Dude. I mean, look, we talked about Tej on the last two. We've been talking about him on the podcast. We won't spend too much time on Tej, but is this not a prime example of like it's the exact same situation? Shane Doan is part of the the Coyotes organization. I don't know what they're going to be called next. Josh Stone comes soakers. in. He's like he's the lighting donors. It up. He's lighting it up. He's like so good for tonight. Such a snipe. That Anyways. was so sweet. And all you can think of is like imagine, imagine Iggy in one of the Flames jerseys. We'll, we'll see. see what happens, man. And he's kind of all over the place in terms of he's for sure he's around that top ten area. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if winning games now means you're makes it a more slam dunk to pick him. Like I'm down for that. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Igor Sharangovich, we saw that nifty little goal. Kadri ties it up in the third. Kadri scores another one off a of Uyghur. Uh, I thought Kuzmenko did a great job in this game. Great job. Goal. Well, yeah, you know? we were talking. Yeah, we were talking about how he's kind of got those Kachuk hands in tight. That's a little Kachuk play too. Like. Most guys yep. like try to like poke that in or don't know what to do with a bouncing puck right in the slot. He makes a really skilled play and knows what to do with it. The Flames on the power play late. I guess it was early in the period, five minutes in. And so, yeah, you got Kuzmenko digging the puck out. He dishes it over to Weir, goes off of Cadre's leg. You kind of wish like, Weegs he has got it. He would have got his 20th, but he'll get it next time. I don't know if I've ever yeah, seen yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Remember that play in, I remember the Islanders, New York Islanders in overtime. I want to say it was Chris Campoli, but he scores twice. The puck went through the net. Remember that's that? Sick. Yeah, that's oh, what I thought awesome. we saw. Yeah, and that was a great turns goal. Out, turns out he scored zero times. <laughs> but, but, dude, what, a, what an entertaining game. Like, that was a fucking barn burner. Tank bowl barn toilet, burner. Toilet maybe. bowl tankathon barn burner. You know, you're, I know you're kind of upset they won, but I just, I I'm still, not a, uh, it doesn't change anything in the current tank. It just would have got you like that much closer to Arizona. Oh, uh, we did take a bit of a tumble today because freaking Seattle lost. Fuck. 
Dude, we're getting right around 10. We're, we're teachers going. Listen, I do agree with the kind of like, I mean, in my heart, I'm like, dude, just lose and get the best pick possible. But I understand letting the chip, chips fall where they may and, and getting the pick. Sometimes you never know, right? Like the hockey gods have an interesting way of reward, except for the Oilers. They just get whatever they want. But the hockey gods have an interesting way of rewarding uh, good work. Okay, Michael, what do you want to do next? Toyota, well, you want to do another ad break? We're gonna get let's, to do a, let's do a break, and then we will come back with the road ahead and get your questions in. and we'll Get uh, your questions in. Let's do this. Questions. Let's hammer them out. We are well into the winter months now, and you can feel it, can't you? That urge to get away. Maybe some beach time to warm up those bones of yours. Maybe a hockey sports kind of road trip. Well, when you pack your bags, make sure you don't forget Alberta Blue Cross. There's only one thing better than sharing memories, and that's making new ones. Alberta Blue Cross Travel Insurance protects your memories and more wherever travel takes you. Visit ab.bluecross.ca slash travel for more information. Alberta Blue Cross, celebrating life's memorable moments inspired by hockey. Hey guys, it's Pinder chatting about Charm Diamond Center. Did you know that Charm has been Canadian owned and operated since 1972? And there's over 85 locations coast to coast to coast with Charm and their sister brands. Uh, get this now, you wanna get something custom made? How about custom rim building delivered in less than four weeks? That's unreal. That is the Charm Masterpiece program and they've got unbeatable pricing policies as well. Whether it's mine diamonds or Canadian lab grown diamonds, check them out. For more information, go to charmdiamondcenters.com. That's charmdiamondcenters.com. All right, gang, listen up. It's time to learn the pro pose, coach. Bend and snap. Beautiful form. Nice arm extension. Facial expression. I could use some work. All right, let's see it. The pro pose. What's that guy doing? I think that's the bend and snap. That's a whole different deal. Mm. Charm, home of the pro pose. Oh! <laughs> The only thing sweeter than the taste of victory is starting your day with the new Cinnabon Pull Apart from Wendy's. But there's no reason you can't have both now that Wendy's and Daily Face Off Fantasy are giving you a chance to win weekly prizes all season long. And hey, even if you make a few wrong picks, at least you know you're heading to Wendy's right now for a $5 Cinnabon Pull Apart and a small coffee. It's a great choice. Sign up for the Daily Face Off Survivor Pool sponsored by Wendy's and the Wendy's app. Let's get back to the hockey talk after Burner returns. All right, man. Let's look at this schedule. Let's look at the tank. We call it the road ahead. Why don't we call it the tank ahead, eh? Tank ahead. The season's almost done. Dude, this season's been dragging on a little bit. I got to be honest with you. Tonight tonight yes. was a nice reprieve, but it's been dragging on. Well, you just want the playoffs to get going so you can watch the Oilers lose. I hate the Oilers, the yep. Man, there's some good-looking teams coming out of the West. Let's get well, to the let's road ahead. Let's take a look at the road ahead. Let's take the a look road, road ahead, ahead by Village, presented by Village Honda. They're in the Northwest Auto Mall and online at villagehonda.com. They got new in stock inventory on the ground. You can start all your automotive adventures at Village Honda. New vehicle pricing is MSRP. I told you my dad went there and got a car there. He keeps telling Village Honda, Village Honda, great place to go. All makes, all models, all budgets, 70 units on site and accessed over 400 more in their dealer group. Make Village Honda your one-stop automotive destination in Calgary. Northwest Auto Mall, online at villagehonda.com. All right, we got the Canucks on Tuesday. A nice 8 p.m. mountain start. That'll be fun. Is Lindholm back? Is he back? Is he injured still? What's the deal with Lindholm? What's he been up to? He's he's playing. I watched the, the final minutes of the Vancouver Oilers game last night. Well, there's had their, their goalie out, empty netter, goalie pull for the extra attacker, and Lindholm made a great, great defensive play. Yeah, I'm still so cheering. Uh, and then I'm and so the, and then Zamora rocks somebody right after that. So it was yeah. it was good. I'm, I'm on the said, I'm on the Jets bandwagon, not anything else, man. To Foley and I, Monahan. Somebody sent me our I know you made this, but we have a picture of of Huberto's newest acquisition from Village Honda. Oh Jack, yeah. Jack, I just sent it to you. I don't know if you're able to pull it up, but maybe we can we can uh, show everybody what Hubie is rolling around with these days. Um, while we while we look at the rest of the games here, 
And then we got the Sharks. What do we got? 18th. We got the Sharks. We got the Sharks again. So, I mean, I wouldn't be complaining if they lost two in a row here to round out the season. Not going to complain. I think what's the lowest we can finish? We can I'm still finish ahead of Seattle. We can still finish ahead of Auto. Yeah. We're probably where we're going to be, to be honest, with two games left. Ninth overall? No. Seattle, we're tied with Seattle, but they have the, we, they get have the tiebreaker for the worst team. I think we have the tiebreaker. Don't we have more regulation wins? Well, they got them in there right now. So, yeah, anyways, I, I, trust I, probably, have to not I don't have, think but. we're, I don't think we're catching Ottawa in the inverse standings. We're definitely not catching the Yotes. Hmm. The tank dream so, was a lot. The tank dream was alive there. It was alive for a little bit, but I'm okay. Hell, with it we now. could we could catch the Devils if we're not careful. Then the bad way. Yeah, please don't, please don't. Just like, just lose to Vancouver, lose to San Jose, and we're all good. Don't play, even, don't play, don't play Cadre or Uyghur. These the guys need to take a night off. You can even move up ahead of Buffalo. So you're picking somewhere between eighth and twelfth. You know right we're gonna 10th. win. You know we're gonna close up the season like on a big heater. What would it be? We're going to win the last two games, so we'll go one, two, three, four, five, and one in the last six games. You know that's going to happen. It's, it's a universal law of the Calgary Flames. We can't pick in the top five or six. There's your road oh. ahead. Here's oh. here's a picture of Hubert O's new, uh, He's got his new wheels, folks. Look at that whip. He's, got the, he's just, the tank commander. Just cruising around Calgary. Cruising in the tank. He's the tank commander, man. Just commanding the tank. Thanks, Jack. All right, that was the road ahead presented by Village Honda. Again, my dad, my dad raves about this place. So, Village you gotta Honda. get him on here. Is he? Is he? Can you get him on the next one? Um, can we put a, can we put a testimonial in or what? Yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Village Honda has a huge selection. Used vehicles, Northwest Auto Mall. Go down there, just like my dad. All right, man. All right. Should we take? Should we take some questions? Do we want to get into with these with these crazy people in the chat here or what? Let's open it up. Let's get crazy. Let's get nuts. You want to get nuts? You want to get Let's nuts? Get, Let's nuts. get nuts. What's a realistic ask if and when we trade Marky? I did want a big question, Kim. I wanted to bring this up with you when we were talking about player extensions, off seasons. What do you do? Does it feel? Because it kind of starts to feel to me like the trade value is a little bit diminished now on our Markstrom as it was compared to trade deadline. I don't think so. I don't know. I think I think the teams who like him will still like him, right? It's, yeah. you, you use the analogy of like, right? You want to buy a house, you're going to come back if you're interested. So, what is a realistic ask? <laughs> to, to me, I would take whatever anybody wants to give from Jake Markstrom. Everybody just totally forgot about how bad he was last season, and we're like, oh, we got to get a haul. I don't know. You would you be? You'd probably be looking for. I don't know. The goalie trades are hard because what's the last big goalie trade? Well, and you know what? Like we we kind of we roasted, we roasted Fitzpatrick a bit for saying what he said post deadline. Yeah. Well, but he bitched he and whined, he, and he was like, mm, "I'm not going to let teams uh, bully me into trading." It's uh, GM exploitation. I got uh, yeah, and file then he went a complaint. And got Jake Allen, so he was kind of being a little whiny bitch about it for sure. But you know what? I'm sitting here I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's right because Mark Marky was going on a fucking heater. And if you do look at his past seasons, like you look at the last season compared to this season, well, how, how do you know he's, how he's going to be next season? Yeah, we have no idea. So I, I don't know. know. Maybe maybe you don't put too much stock into uh, you know three half or two two half or two thirds. Yeah, two thirds of a great goaltending season. But I don't like. I I think in the summer it's going to come down to just. What's the appetite for the player to stay? Because he's got full control with the no movement clause. I don't even know if it's going to be Conroy setting the market because it is probably going to be a case of we're moving you. Will you wave or move me and I'll wave? Like, I don't think it's going to be a thing where the flames set a price. And if somebody meets the price, they're going to move them. it will probably be a discussion be between Markstrom and Conroy beforehand. But I mean, if you're looking at what you, you want, you just probably want a young player and maybe – Based on marks from season, you'd maybe be wanting a first round pick, but you'd probably be, I don't know. I, I, I'm not getting my hopes up for like this huge marks from return, to be honest. I'd be happy with like a good prospect in a second round pick, to be honest. I'd be happy with that as well. Yeah. So. All right, Ken, is there a lot of, there is a lot of talk about maybe trading Kadri and Kuzmenko. I haven't seen a lot of that, but 
I'll trust you, Ken. Kuzmenko chemistry, for sure, yeah. The chemistry between the two is unbelievable. Would Connie really consider even pulling the trigger on any involving them? I think anything is on the table right now. Everything's on the table. You're you're rebuild. You're in a rebuild cycle. You're twenty what in the league? You're in the bottom. You're in the tankathon. Everything and anything is on the table. Having does, said that, does Connie just treat Kuzmenko and maybe Cotter in this conversation? But cotter has got that. He's got that long long term. So you got to find someone that's going to take that on. But does well, he treat Kuzmenko as one of his most valuable assets at this point? Like how does he do this? Well, I think Kuzmenko is a little different because he's just found money. You got him as a cap dump. Um, if somebody offers you something you can't refuse, absolutely you trade him. Because listen, I'm a huge fan. I love watching Kuzmenko play. I, I've loved what I've seen. It's cool to see him and Kadri playing so well together. But then the side of me that wants the team to have a successful rebuild is like, well, you can't fall too in love with guys who are leading a team to a 24th overall finish, right? We can't be going too crazy. So if there's a trade that makes sense, you're absolutely going to look at it. I think with Kadri, it's different because by all accounts, he likes being here and he wants to stay here. And he does have a no movement clause. But if there were ever a situation where he came to the team and was like, I want to be moved, I'm sure you could get something back for him. So they're playing well together right now. I think everything's on the table, though. They're playing phenomenal together right now. Yeah, Kadri's been unbelievable this year. Like if you're uh, if you're another team and you're maybe interested in Kuzmenko, I think there like he comes with a bit of a question mark, right? He was unwanted by Vancouver. You don't really necessarily know if he can put together a full eight two yet, or if he can play both sides of their ice. So I don't know. I think I, if you're Connie, you're just hoping that he has an unbelievable season, carries whatever he's doing yeah. now into next season. Because that that will skyrocket his trade value at if the, that becomes an option at the end of the day both of those guys well codger specifically aren't going to be core members of the team when they're competitive again probably so if there's a trade on the table you absolutely go for it codger's gonna be here for a while man yeah five more years only it's not that bad richard two games left what grade would you give connie and huska this season they get different grades obviously but do you want to take this one first well, I think I think Conroy's done a pretty good job. A think, minus? Yeah, probably. A, I think the, the one thing that's keeping me from giving Conroy like an A grade is the fact that he was like trying to sign Lindholm for so long. Yeah, not so a good sign. And Hannafin. And Hannafin. I mean, Hannafin's less scary than Lindholm because he's probably at least going to give you some value on a deal that's paying him. What do you get in Vegas? Like 7.35? He got paid. So that's a, that's a big ticket for a guy like Hannafin. But... He's done a really good job other than like those red flags of like, yeah, they did offer Lindholm a shit ton of money. And I mean, they, the end of the they day, backed up a Brinks truck to Lindholm's driveway and thank God he declined. Yeah. If Lindholm did us a huge favor and Hannafin maybe kind of did too. So I would say that's the only thing keeping me from giving Connor an A is, is that everything else has been pretty, he's done a really solid job. Huska on the B plus for Connie. Yeah. B plus for Connie. You. I'll say, I'll give him the bet for the doubt. A minus. All right. But Huska, I'm still not I'm still not sold on this guy. Has he done a good job considering you know the whole situation with the group? Yes. I just the team is so bad defensively. Yeah. And and we're not that much better offensively. It took you 74 fucking games to figure out the power play. <laughs> like, come on. Like some yeah. of these personnel decisions, you know, I don't necessarily I don't have too much beef with 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 uh, healthy scratching Zara because he's been great. And he's been doing the right things with him since. Um, and even today, what was it? Uh, Rudy said a, a quote from from Huska is, "How do you?" Someone asked him, "How do you deal with Coronado? How do you help him progress?" And Huska says, "You just gotta keep playing him." Yeah. So, oh, then then do it, Huska. That's been my complaint with Coronado is he hasn't been playing enough. But I'll give him a B minus. I don't know. I guess yeah, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm pretty generous. You're a little lenient. I'll go maybe more of like a C plus. Like you said, I I think maybe it's in the context of. The offense, well, it has been clicking of late, mostly because of the power play. But systems-wise, the team has dropped off a clip yeah. defensively. And this is even before they traded everybody away. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's one It's one thing if they trade everybody in the summer and they're running this rebuild skeleton crew and your defensive numbers suck. But they've had a really hard time defending with how he's kind of like changed things around. Um, and I mean, they haven't really... They're still playing kind of meat and potatoes offense for the most part. So systems wise, it's been the changes probably haven't worked as well as you'd have hoped. 
And you still haven't gotten Hubie Dooby Doo going. Yeah. Huberto is going to have probably. Well, he might have. He got a couple. He have two points tonight. He might get to fifty five. We'll see. Um, but then, yeah, I just think more roster decisions. The kind of like the, pulling the old Daryl Sutter move of like playing guys way too high in the lineup who shouldn't be there. And I mean, ultimately, you had what ninety four points. How many points last year? Almost made the playoffs last year. At a huge drop off. I'm not saying that's all Huska's fault. I'm just saying if you're looking at the entire body of work throughout the year, you're kind of well, left. Yeah, it's okay. Especially when you're we're being sold that it was the coaching was the issue. Yeah, 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 yeah. The context matters, right? It was the and coach. And apparently this dark cloud's been yeah. lifted. Everybody's walking on air. Yeah. Farting out bubbles. They're so happy to start the season. Hey, so he's done, a, immaculate. he's done a good job quieting the noise and dealing with a bunch of bullshit and a bunch of like – there's been shit going on all year. Trade rumors, guys wanting out, all this stuff. So he's gonna done a good job in that sense. He's done a good job letting the leaders lead. But you know, yeah. the on ice products has still been missed a lot of the night, a lot of nights. I'll, so I'll give him a bit of the benefit out. Just like a player, it's his rookie season. First so year, yep. Yeah. He's gotta he's gotta get better as a coach and as an individual in this league as well. As long as he goes the route of like a Jared Bednar and not a Glenn Gulletson or a, one of the other five million. What do you mean the players greatest players power play coach players. of all time? Yeah. Throwing sticks over the glass and shit. <laughs> Kenneth, these final games of the season are similar to preseason. Don't yep. read anything into these guys padding their stats during the last eh, five games. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. I mean, at the same time, too, they could just pack it in, too. I'm just loving the ever effort and the compete. Because like they, they, like, like you said, they haven't packed it in. They're made they're at least. Look, I don't want to watch these fucking games. You think I'd be watching this if we didn't have to do this? Do you think I'd be doing this right now at 10 o'clock on a Sunday? <laughs> think I would have watched no. this game tonight? No, no fucking, be, fucking chance. I'm fucking watching the highlights. But, you know, they're making the games interesting. And I'm sitting there as a fan enjoying the fucking product right now, even though I'm sure, you know, I'm not sure for losses, but, you know. Well, yeah, and it doesn't Sorry. matter. It's hard because, like, it's not that it means nothing. You still – and, I mean, we can get lost in this. Oh, you need to learn to play the right way and this losing culture bullshit we hear about. But, I mean, for guys like Zary and Coronado and the younger guys, like, it's important that Kadri doesn't mail it in and the Coleman is – you know, th these older guys are still – playing hard every night it's well, it's not the, it's not as important as they probably think it is and you hear like that in the media but it's still important they're setting a really good example for these young guys yeah we got any more jack we got no one evan if market gets moved in the summer do you keep vladar or should we look at a more veteran option like talbot I'd be per I personally would be fine with vladar i think it'd be a good incentive season for him too like he's in a contract year Show us what you got. Can you give us a solid tandem effort? I'd be I'd be comfortable with Ladar. I still think he has more to show than he's shown in the last two years. Well, I think if you're management and you do pull the trigger on a Markstrom trade in the offseason, then to me, I'm sitting here as a fan of my kill. And what's our what, what are we trying to do here in the net? And I think what you're trying to do is you're you're trying to mold and give Dustin Wolf everything he needs to become a stellar pro and NHL goaltender. Yeah. So then, then I look at, well, is Vladar going to help him do that? I don't think so. Maybe you bring in a bit more of a veteran guy, or maybe Vladar is. I don't know. I got. I don't really get goaltenders, to be honest with you. They're, they're weird. like so hit or miss. They're weird. They're always. Everybody knows who plays hockey. The goaltender is always the weirdest guy in the room. But I don't know. Does 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 would you want Vladar to be kind of the mentor to Wolf, or is Wolf that then a one A? situation and Lars 1B like what are you trying to do if you're Connie yeah well in the net? yeah that's what I was gonna ask you is like Kate do you what's more important to you having a guy who like is there to mentor Dustin Wolf or having a guy who can take a lot of and take some pressure off Dustin Wolf it's like we're playing the Oilers tonight and we might absolutely shit can we're gonna sacrifice poor Dan Vladar put him in the net there to go take one for the team and get lit up so I don't know I think yeah, Vladar he's the only guy that can beat the Oilers so Keep him for that. He's under contract. I like Dan Vladar's attitude. He's a good guy. I'd be fine with Vladar, rolling with Vladar and Wolf in the next season. Hopefully that answers your question. Justin, why can't the Flames learn when to win and when to tank? Very over mediocrity with this team. Well, at the end of the day, Justin, I think it's, you know, it's kind of what I said earlier is you're going to finish where you deserve to finish. Like you're, we're playing these last final games. 
You're playing against San Jose, the Ducks, the Coyotes, all teams in the bottom of the league, and these are entertaining games. So we're actually quite evenly matched with these teams, right? But we are able to beat them. So maybe we're slightly better. We're able maybe to beat them good. now, not when it fucking matters, apparently. <laughs> Trying oh, yeah. to make the playoffs. There's, two points out of the playoffs, and we can't beat them. When there's too much pressure on the line, no, then we can't handle it. But so uh, yeah, it, you know, it's tanking. You can't. You can't. No matter, especially hockey, with it being so variable, it's like pretty much important. You just have to draft well, no matter where you where you pick. You know, you can be a Carolina and not pick a lot. You, you like even Dallas. I know they had a really high pick in Miro Heiskin in 2017. But Dallas has a lot of their core players from later picks. Jason Robertson, Jake Ottinger, Wyatt Johnston. These guys aren't super late picks, but they're not top 10 picks for sure. Um, Thomas Harley. So you you draft well is the key. It's It doesn't necessarily – it would help. It sure would help if you finish top five or top three. But if you just draft well continuously for a few years and put the work into drafting and doing a good job there, you're going to reap the benefits eventually. Well, that and good management decisions across the board. I mean, Mike Gould had a had a good tweet the other day. Like we're we're just breaking even out of the deficit that Bradtree Living put us in with his overspending here as a GM for nineteen yeah, months. Yeah, just with draft picks. So it's gonna t- it's gonna take a little while. And trust me, I feel your pain. We've been mediocre for my entire life. So since two thousand four. It's the ultimate cock tease, eh? It's the cock tease team. They, they pull you back in. Oh, yeah. It's and worse when you think you're Flames, out stuck in. Flames fans yeah, are so easy to pull back run, in, man. That 04 run will keep us around for 30 years. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Fuck. Dude, winning a playoff series against, like, Vancouver 10 years ago has kept most people forever. They're, they're on board for, like, 40 years. One playoff series victories, I am on board. Playoffs, baby. All right. What else do we got here? Monty. Would you take Tiege again over all the defensemen available? I pro I wouldn't. I well, I, w- I would for fun. Talking, yeah, you're talking about the the stud defenseman in the top. Well, 10. It, de- it depends where you pick and who's available. Okay, well, let's say you end up picking sixth overall versus eight overall. We've had this kind of conversation. Yeah. It's like if you're picking around ten, you're probably fine going off the board with Tiege. Because there's the defensemen down that deep aren't going to be as good as the ones before then. But if you're picking six to eight, yeah. well, you've got the. I haven't scouted yeah. these guys much. I've seen Tiege play. I know he's going to be a good NHL player. I know that. It'd be tough to pass if you had the ability to take like one of Parekh or Sam Dickinson or uh, the Russian guy who's a monster, Soleyev, or the other. He's like Belarusian, uh, Levshunov. Or even like a guy like um, Zeev Booyam. Like, there's just a lot of really good defensemen. It would just be hard to pass them up. And you never know, but just based on pure scouting reports, it'd be tough to, if one of those guys is available, take them. But I'd still fucking love it. So, me too, dude. Dude, I'm, I'm all in on TJ. That's yeah. all I want. That's all I want to know. I just want to finish ooh, ooh, exactly I like this, where I like this question where, where the Flames want to take TJ is where I want to finish. Who would you root for if Edmonton Soilers? I prefer the Coilers, but Soilers is also good. Soilers is brilliant. I like it. And Vancouver cannot make it to the Western. This is not even a question, dude. 100% yeah, it's, it's the Oilers. Vancouver. You cheer for the Oilers over the Canucks? I mean, no. Root for the them, opposite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the Canucks, and it's not even close. 100% I would cheer for the Canucks. There was a brief moment in time where the Canucks oh, yeah. were, were so hated when they had Kessler and Bieksa and the Sedins and Burroughs and yeah. all those because... shitheads. If it was 10, 12 years ago, for sure. I remember watching game seven in Boston beating them, and I was just like praying the whole time. I was like, please, like, please let this. I hate these guys so much. But as of now, it's the Oilers. And yeah, you got to leave. I'm not going to cheer for Vancouver, but Lindholm's Dorov. I like Pedersen. I, I don't yeah. like that. I like, eh, yeah, this feels wrong. I don't like Vancouver. Screw them. But hey, like, yeah, we need, do we need them to lose? What is our draft pick affected that first round pick? I don't know. Everybody keeps mentioning this as like, because Vegas is tied up in a draft pick, depending on is conditional Vegas, which is conditional with yeah. Dallas, right? Conditional Pike, Vancouver. Pike had an article on it the other day. I got to pull it up. To Would it be sure. best if they were all eliminated in the first round? Probably. I, I think, I think we want, do we want, we want Vegas to beat Dallas if they play each other. We want Vegas to go far, I think, because we want that third to turn into a second. But 
under no circumstances will I ever cheer for the Edmonton Oilers. Zero. In fact, like I don't know if you listen to the podcast, but just wait how entertaining it gets when they are on the brink of elimination. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sing you my Connor Neckbeard song. How about that? Yeah. All right. We got any more? We can do a few more, right? No, oh, yeah. Overtime, overtime. It's only 10 o'clock. Steinberg kept, does this for like seven hours, man. Steinberg's doing this for eight more hours, folks. If yeah. you kept Markstrom and Trade Vladar, what would you want back? A pick, or are you looking for someone more like ads like Kuzmenko? I mean, I think you want somebody younger than Kuzmenko. I I'd be all in on I'd be all in on a pick or a, a player under a prospect under 24, 23. You're not getting much back for Vladar, yeah, let's be honest. I don't think you're getting jack That's your shit. boy. I don't Victor. think you're getting jack shit back for Vladar, dude. You could get you could, think about what you could get from Markstrom. Like I just said, you're probably getting a draft pick and maybe a prospect. Vladar, what does he make? He's got a he's got a heftier salary than you might think, too. So if Markstrom was a tough deadline sell, then yeah, Vladar imagine was Vladar. Be a... and he's been he's been really bad the last couple of years. So I think you'd probably have to pay someone to take Vladar at this point. Montreal. Turn him into two first. Yeah, let, let's avoid paying people to take contracts again. Sean Monaghan, 26 goals. <laughs> what else we got, Jack? Gordon, in the mock draft, they have Muse at 29th as a right D. I love to get both Tej and Muse. What do you think about Muse as a right D? I all I know is a few scouting reports that I've seen about. I'm not I'm, I'm not gonna be a super well versed. Um, I think he plays. Where does he play in the OHL? Yeah, he's 67th. Hey, man, we need defensemen. And I, I know it looks like we maybe have a glut of defensemen. I think we have a glut of not so great defensemen. Organizationally, this team needs yeah. more upper echelon defensemen. So if yeah. you can come out of if you can come out of this first round with a with a solid defenseman, I think you'd be pretty happy. Not that you're drafting based on position, but yeah. When was the last time we had a young stud? D-man? Defenseman. Dion? And he was more he was more offense, right? I mean, An Anders, maybe Anderson. Shillington came with pretty high billing. Adam, yeah, Adam, they, like, Adam, they, Adam Fox. I'm talking like studs, dude. Like yeah, we're talking. We picked him in the first round and we're like, hell yeah. It's been it's been a while. Fox fucker. Uh Justin, do you think Coronado cracks the full time roster next year? Well, I think he deserves to, but that's a good question. I'm actually, you know, as of late, I'm kind of okay how they're how they're dealing with him because, like you said, you pull up those AHL stats. He's a little over a point per game. Yeah, I think he's got 42 and 40. So if they just keep, I don't know. I think he cracks the roster to start the season. I don't know if he'll get sent back down full time. Well, that's that is the question. What do you yeah, think? I, I think he'll be on. The, I think he should be on the team. I, I might have. He a, should be. Might have a goddamn conniption if he's not on the team. I might have a meltdown if he's not. No. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. He does. I think he puts in the work in the off season. He comes yeah. in a training camp. He he staples himself onto the, onto the roster and just plays himself. He makes it impossible the, for the coach to. No, he did. He did it down. in. He did it in uh, preseason this year. He made it impossible for them to cut him. He was great in preseason. It's a good question. Probably got a few more here. Hey, Parker. What's up, brother? What's up, fellas? If Cole Eiserman, is it Eiserman? Yeah. Slips, slips to the Flames pick. Would you be okay if we took him over Tej or you guys set on Tej in that 8 to 10 range? I'm set. <laughs> I'd be okay taking a guy who all he does is score goals for sure. I mean, I in my in heart, Eiserman? in my little heart, in my little Flames Jerome McGinley loving heart, Parker, I'd die a little bit inside for sure. But dude, Eiserman, he's he's dropped a lot this year in the draft rankings, as far as I can tell. All that kid does is score goals. The great goal scorer. So at the end of the I'd day, I'd be okay with it. At the end of the day, and this just probably speaks to my fandom more than anything. I'm just hoping that the Flames finish exactly where they want to pick Teach. That's all I'm hoping for. It's probably not good, right? I should be hoping for someone better than him. But I, I think that's a like, fair I, I think that's a fair I, At this stage of the game, I'm going to trust Connie and them. But if they fucking pass on him and whoever we draft turns out to not be as good as an NHL or as Tej, I will be pissed for the rest of my life. 
Want to do, what do you want to do? One more question? One more, two more? One more, two more. One more, two more. Let's go. If we got two more, we'll do two more. Let's do two more. What do you boys think about the Tarek, the Tarek passer cack? I don't even know who he is, so you're going to have to touch on this one. Will he, be, will he be a steal of the first round? He will be, in, in Evan's opinion. If the Flames don't pick him, if the Flames pick the pick right before him and pick somebody else, then he will be the steal of the first round. That's usually how it works, right? Yes. Usually, I, don't, I don't know. Usually, I don't know enough usually, about the player to speak on him. So I'll let I'll let Gould or somebody more into the draft stuff do that next time. Okay, last one. One more. If the Flames make the playoffs next year, you guys are gonna full neck beers. I don't think you ever go full neck beard, do you? We should we should do a little fan contest, eh? Who can grow the best neck beard? Do something that if Connor if the Oilers are balanced in the first round, if they get swept, eh? If the Oilers get swept in the first round, I'll grow a fucking neck beard. Okay. Oh I'll yeah, say, you're on. I'll say, I like it. I'll say it right here, right now. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do some sort of weird donation when I shave it off. Sounds like a plan. All right, guys. Thanks for jumping on. That was fun. Good game. The Tank Bowl. That was fun. Um, I think Barnburn is back tomorrow, and you can listen to our show whenever you want. It's called In the Dome Podcast. You don't have to listen to it. It's cool with me. Um, but we're releasing an episode tomorrow too, so check that out. And hey, that was a fun game to watch, man. Shit, now I don't want the Oilers to get swept. <laughs> Have a good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Anger.